if all of you were willing to come across this video at some point, then that's amazing. I, uh, just before I get into my intro, I want to thank all of you for watching these videos thus far, along with these official anime manga stories. I put a lot of work into that, um, but... Out of all that being said, this is Second and Cow Stuff Final Tammy 2023 here, and all of you already know the four options, but they're up to you. So, this paper. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's the. Uh, I know it's backwards, but it's the little cover for my uh, last manga. Um, the Cursed Ones of the Shadow Witch. There's only one season. If you guys want to go watch that, then be my guest. Feel free. Go right ahead. It's up to you guys. Um, But strap in and strap down because this is a personal opinion. This is a ranking 10 of my favorite animes of all time, including some of mine. Now, keep in mind that this is a tier list that I came up with all by myself, so these are also kind of like recommendations, if you will, uh, including some of mine. Um, but thus far, you guys should already know some of mine. So let's get straight into number 10. All right, number 10 includes Persona 3. Persona 4, Golden, I speak for the, uh, true versions of the animes, not these rebooted crap. Why did you come up with this, Atlas? The games, aka the actual anime series, has much more in it than just speedrunning through it and making it look terrible. But, there's also 5 Royal. Now, I speak for both the vanilla version of the anime and... The upgraded version of it. I can't say anything for Persona 3 Reload, the anime remake. Because it's not out yet. But you guys still have time to pre-order. So go ahead and do that. If you guys are Xbox players or... Even... PlayStation players. Feel free. Your best choice would probably be the $100 one. But why would you want to spend that much? Honestly, the $70 one is, yeah. Okay, and then there is also my other Persona anime stories, including Sakaiji and Sakaiji Rebirth. Now, these are great anime stories, including my Persona stories leading up to the third one, the remake of the anime. Um, in a short nutshell of my stories and the main storyline combined, there's nothing more to say than that they are amazing stories. Now, mine are kind of short in a way because I am a horror writer that writes mangas and Resident Evil stories, etc. But keeps the main aspects out of it, you know. Of that being said, though, we all have our personal opinion at the end of the day, so let's get straight into number 9. This is a recommendation that I recommend you guys to watch, but also if you like comedy. Number 9 is Zombieland Saga and Zombieland Saga Season 2 Revenge. This is very funny. I feel like Brenna did a very good job as many characters, such as... Sakura Minamoto, Yuno Gasai, Kasumi Ishiki from, I think that's her last name, I can't remember, it's been so long, from King of Thorn, and I'm not sure if I said this one already, but Toka from all seasons of Tokyo Ghoul, even season 3 and 4, and many other characters that she plays as. Uh, if you guys know any other characters besides the ones I just named off that Brenna actually plays as, I can't pronounce her last name correctly, so... I mean, I can pronounce her first name just fine. Brenna, it's very simple to say. However, 
If you guys know any more, then uh, comment down below of who she plays as. Now, I recommend this one because if you're having a bad day and you want to, let's say, make an AMV or just write something of comedy or just watch this to cheer up your day, then Zombieland Saga Seasons 1 and 2 is for you. Whereas that third season, that Crunchyroll, slash Funimation, I don't really trust Crunchyroll. Alright, number 8, surprisingly. Tokyo Ghoul. All seasons, season one through four, and Witchblade. Where do I start with uh, Tokyo Ghoul, first of all? Because Witchblade is also in number eight. Uh, we'll get to that one in a minute. Um, where do I start with Tokyo Ghoul? Amazing, very horrifying, and probably what Austin Tyndall is known for as a great voice actor of the English category in anime. He is best known for his role as Ken Kaneki and I think his role from Prison School. I haven't really seen Prison School before, nor uh, like Accelerator or anything like that. Uh, he is in Zombieland Saga though. He plays as the police officer in Saga, in the Saga Prefecture. Tokyo Ghoul is amazing in so many ways that if you want to get scared so much and want to jump and say, Oh my god! Then it's for you. I do recommend reading the uh, Season 3 and 4 lore before watching the anime, though. Along with Season 2 to figure out uh, the true ending, basically, of Season 2 and what happens to Ken Kaneki. Because uh, Season 2 in the anime actually has a false ending and doesn't tell you anything. But, I can understand if you guys were confused, but the manga will help explain everything. Feel free and watch this one for yourself. Now let's get into Witchblade, as we are still in number 8. Okay, Witchblade. Masane Amaha. I don't know her English voice actor, but, uh, the, the name of it, but... Whoever else that she plays as in any other animes... And Masane in general, magnificent. I did, you can't blame me for this, viewers, you can't. As many times as I watch this very uh, sci-fi, horror, thriller, horny anime. I, the reason I say horny is because whenever Masane turns into Witchblade, she does some stuff that helps her fight, I guess. Such as making moaning noises and licking her fingers or doing God knows what. When really she's just a simple mother in general. Who, and I'm guessing by now that everybody has seen this one. So if you haven't, skip past this. But she was a mother who, when she realized what the witch blade does to her, it's taking away her life spam. So in order to... Get the, like, the monsters off of her daughter. She calls them forth to the Tokyo Tower, and she dies. Which, I cry a lot in this anime when I realize that. Even though I've seen it so many times, it's such a good one. You guys should go check out Witchblade. It was made in 2005, which was the year that I was born in. Surprising what life can bring to you, but I did find moral lessons that I can't remember in which way, but Moving on to number seven. This has two of them in it Number seven kill a kill and black lagoon all seasons for black lagoon uh, I'll just say kill a kill is awesome in many ways in a nutshell um, There's nothing more to say about kill a kill other than fantastic uh, moving on to Black Lagoon, I do recommend these two animes, but there's three seasons of, um, of Black Lagoon. So, going over Black Lagoon in a nutshell is very hard because it's so good. Now, if you thought Brad Swaley played a great role as Light Yagami, who was 
your average high school student who was normal at first until he obtained the death note and he became a victim to it being getting rid of all the enemies all the criminals in the world was his goal but then the death note supposedly as theories go on and on even to this day the death note takes him over basically and then he just can't get enough i mean well, why? He doesn't even care about his own father dying. But he does die eventually as Kira, a.k.a. Re translate that to English, killer. Yeah, he dies. Like, Yagami dies. We all know this. I thought Tanaka was honestly a really cool character, too. But he's only in the manga, so... Which is canon to the uh, main storyline of Death Note. But, except for that Donald Trump part. Ugh. Anyways, back to Black Lagoon. If you thought he played a great role, great role as Light Yagami, then Rock Okajima, or whatever his last name is, Rock, was one of my favorite characters, along with Revy. But until they messed up Rock in Season 2, he was traumatized by this Japanese girl that he was trying to protect, or something along the lines like that. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Revy tells him not to look, and he looks anyway in the regards of being traumatized by her stabbing her neck with a big giant sword after her master dies. Then Rock, a few years later, you see, used to be scared of gunfire, and he didn't even flinch in the beginning of Season 3. You could say that Rock kind of goes on a little revenge spree and is kind of messed up in the head just like Light Yagami. There's a resemblance there. The lesson I got from Season 3 of, from Rock's perspective, point of view, was life can be hard and it can mess you up in so many ways that it's not even funny. But I recommend Black Lagoon Seasons 1 through 3. It's a really good one if you guys haven't checked it out. Now, moving on to number 6, another, a.k.a. the very first... Final Destination, the anime. Now, if you guys don't remember, I made a lot of Final Destination anime spin-offs, and that's all thanks to the, well, ideas of me being a writer. That was near the beginning of my days as a writer. You guys could probably still find it on the channel. I have not taken it down at all. I don't take any of my stuff down that I do or write. I do age restrict it every now and then because it's, well, it's a mature audience channel. There's nothing to be said about that. But, to say that Greg Aries did a pretty good job as Sakaki Kabara, and it kind of was all his fault that the Calamity started all over again in the Curse Class 3A or whatever. Uh... But if you guys haven't seen this, if you've seen Final Destination, and if you've seen my manga anime official stories of Final Destination in that universe, go ahead and watch that. And then you guys can compare it to another. But if you have not seen another from, I think it was 2012. Yeah, it was 2012. Um, Go check that out. It's, it's really amazing. There's nothing more to be said about it other than... It's a masterpiece of an anime. Uh, moving on to number five is all my mangas thus far, as I'm making a new one in the works anyway. Uh, can't tell you the name of it because then you guys will probably steal it. No offense. So number five is all my mangas thus far, <sighs> including the Lucy Fen Hyven Saga. Now we don't talk about the Lucy Fen Hyven Saga. I had way too much fun with it. In my mid days of my mangas. And it got out of hand. If you guys like X rated animes and stuff. Then whatever man. Go check it out. I, I really don't care. I want to say sorry for that one in general. It was kind of a mess as it went on. But the story made sense. It's how do I say this. Without adding the P to it. It's an ornographic anime story. And yeah, you could probably put the pieces together. I regret making that one. And I regret making... Really a lot of them. Um, thus being like... 
My girlfriend is an ecstasy yandere. That one went out of hand in a little ways that cannot be said. It had an opening ending that was... God, I don't even know how to explain that one. I really want to apologize again, like I said, and I'm probably glad that you guys actually took this note of apology for this X-rated anime series known as the Lucy Van Haven... I can't even say Lucy Van Haven saga for all seven seasons... Yes, I had fun making it, but then the end result was all that mattered. So, I want to say again, that I have an apology video for this, like, two of them. One from a long time ago, and one from probably, like, last year. I don't know. But I want to say sorry for that one. It's not one of my favorite ones. It is not. I don't even know why I put it on here, but... I go back and watch it from time to time to see of what mistakes that I've done in there and can replace... By just doing normal anime manga ideas. Which is what I do. And all my other ones thus far are amazing. You guys can go check that out. Like I said, like the Final Destination ones. You can go check that out. I made a side Death Note series. And that actually turned out pretty good. It, it was alright. I mean, the Death Note series that I made was okay. It's not perfect, and in many ways, we are ourselves, and that's all that matters. I try to put moral lessons inside of my stories now, because they're hidden in there somewhere. But, this upcoming one is... It's probably gonna have a few more lessons in it. It's like two seasons long, so it's not even in the works yet. All that is there is the name in episode one of season one. And that's about it. No pictures have been drawn yet. But I can't reveal the name to you guys. Like I said, no offense. Moving on from number 5 is... When They Cry, all seasons, 1 through 3, plus both seasons of the remake. In a nutshell, When They Cry is another horror one that is really good and really confusing. Unless you watch the original Season 2, then it explains everything. The name of Season 2 is When They Cry Kai, that's K-A-I. I, I don't know why they spell it like that. But Higurashi When They Cry is an amazing series. I recommend watching that one and comparing the differences of the original series that was made in the early 2000s, I think like 2006, and they still haven't dubbed Season 1 and 2, but I don't really care about that. Because I can both do dub and sub animes. It's really no big deal for me. But then there is Nan Nan Biori, which Sentimental Films, or however you say it, has not dubbed that either. I would actually like them to dub that, but the chances of that is 1%, because that was made a long time ago. But then again, if you want to watch Nan Nan Biori, which I've still yet to finish to this day, I really want to finish it. Uh, if you want to watch it, it's a comedy anime like Zombieland Saga and many others like Leviathan Last Defense, all that stuff. It's pretty good. Getting on to number three is Helsing 2006 Original Plus Ultimate Remake. Uh, if you, in a nutshell, again, if you guys like vampires and stuff like that, then go ahead and watch both of them. Uh, in my opinion, I like the remake because of the story behind it and how awesome the differences are. And the original one makes sense. It makes way more sense than the remake, but they're different stories in their own way. I do prefer the remake by far because it has more fight scenes and it's more awesome. Uh, moving on from number three is Black Butler All Seasons. High School DXD except Season 4 Hero. The reason I say except for Season 4 of High School DXD is because it's non-canon. And you gotta think, Issei only called R Rhea's... President only a few times in the canon seasons. The journey for me stops in season three. I'm sorry, viewers, but I honestly hate season four. 
because of how much Issei is a, mind you, my manners here, is a prick in Season 4 until he uh, thinks about Rax all the time and it reminds him of the angel that was there with him. That was his first date. I can't remember his her her name, but I don't want to. Moving on from High School DxD, if you guys want to watch that one yet again, that's an X-rated one, but it has a lot of action in it, a lot of cool stuff. Austin Tyndall is in there too, and he has an awesome role in the whole thing, including season four. But I just feel sorry for Austin Tyndall in season four. I feel sorry for all the actresses and all the actors in season four. Did they have you at gunpoint? I don't know. But, moving on from High School DxD, if you guys want to watch this, fine. Black Butler, in general, of what I have to say for this. Amazing. CL Phantom Hive is fantastic. But, you guys can check that out if you want. All I'm saying is that it's pretty cool, and I highly recommend it. Alright, on to number one, finally. Um, Angels of Death plus FLCL, aka Fully Coolie All Seasons, Corpse Party, I speak for the actual version of the anime, the, uh, the game, because I'm guessing that came first before the animation, aka the anime remake, which I plan on watching at some point to compare differences, but no spoilers, please, as I'm still in my first playthrough. And yes, more videos of that anime are coming. They're still coming. We are on Season 3 Blood Drive, and I can't even remember the episode. Oh, God. Uh, if you guys want to go see that crap, it's pretty horrifying, along with Angels of Death. Um, Fully Coley is pretty cool. Thus, I think it was season three. No. I don't know. There was one season, it's called Fully Coley Grunge, and I think that's the fourth season. And if it was the fourth season, it sucks. It's too short, only three episodes long, and it looks shitty. <laughs> the graphics suck, man. I'm. Ugh. It's a mess until they put out the uh, next season, which I do like. Um, let's get on to Saga of Tanya the Evil. This is the last one, plus the story arc movie leading to season two. Okay, what I have to say about Saga of Tanya the Evil is that if you guys like war animes and are looking for a bit of thrill in your life, and the movie isn't dubbed, you can only watch it in Japanese or German. Um, I watched it in Japanese language uh, with English subtitles, because you have to watch it before Season 2, which... Here's my point on side of Tiny the Evil. It's amazing. I like it. The fight with Mary and Tanya was amazing. I thought that was a cool fight to, like, end the actual, like, story arc. I stayed up for an hour and a half watching that. And, oh my god, it was cool. But, honestly, where is the second season at, man? Like, I understand it's still in the works, but... The reveal was released a few years ago, man. You gotta think. Season 1 slash the story arc is part of season 1. That was made in 2017, and that was a lot of years ago, man. But, let me know what is happening with season 2, if you guys have any intel on that. Any theories, comment it down below, because I am eager to watch season 2. Jesus, God. <sighs> Alright, well... That's going to do it for this video. Um, my next manga is on the way of this anime universe that has been created uh, with many animes, including mine. I'm trying to do better on my artwork, honestly. I'm trying. My artwork is drawn pretty weird, but it's at the end of the day, it's what I can only do. So, Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, these are options that are optional, hence the name options. 
You can like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified for more content on the channel. I do highly recommend the two options. The last one's hitting the bell notification so you're notified for more content on the channel and subscribing. But at the end of the day, that's all up to you viewers. This has been Saki Nakaido Stuff Flame Lentiami 2023 here. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Peace out, viewers. Have a great time out there, and bye-bye. Oh, my.